Hi everyone, this is Professor Benjamin and we are moving into the last couple weeks of this course. So stay strong, we're almost to the end. Um, you have water, renewable, non-renewable resources, and then the final exam. So we're moving right along. We have about three more weeks of formal posts and quizzes and then you have your I give you a week there and then you have your final exam. So I'll just show you real quick. So we covered population last week. I want to talk a little bit about climate change and population for the final exam. Um, and then you have water this week. You have um, non-renewable resources next week. And then the following week you have renewable resources. And then we have our review week. Um, don't worry about this consumption project, that's from another class. Um, you have your review week and then you have your final exam. So um, we just finished with our midterm and I wanted to show you that I put up a review for the final exam just like your midterm exam. So same expectations for your midterm exam that are on the final exam. So start preparing now. Um, just real quick I want to cover the midterm exam. Um, some of you did really well. A lot of you did really well. Some of you struggled on the midterm exam and a lot of that has to do with preparation before the midterm exam. I want formal answers. You're given the questions ahead of time. You're asked to write out the questions before the exam. So I'm asking for formal answers that really get into the nitty-gritty of the assignment. Um, so make sure that you do your best on the preparation for the final exam. Um, and I, I promise I usually see a huge surge and um, I would say improvement on the final exam because you understand my expectations on what I'm looking for for the midterm exam, from the midterm exam. Um, the, I gave everybody comments on your midterm exam so you can go to the grades tab and then you can click on the midterm exam and you'll see comments that I wrote under each question. Uh, if you receive partial credit, if you receive no credit, most likely you just answered the question entirely wrong. Um, so last week we covered climate change and I want to talk about, oh, and I put your midterm grades into the system. They should be released to you by tomorrow. Um, so tomorrow or Monday the midterm grades will be released to you. It's just your average right now in the grades tab of Canvas. You can see that uh, right now so that your midterm grade should be of no surprise to you. Um, the other thing is that, so last week we covered climate change, the week before that we covered air, and there's two questions on your final exam that, well, there's actually more than two questions, but one dealing with air has to do with the ozone layer, so, um, the ozone layer is a thin invisible layer that covers the entire earth. Uh, it is in the upper atmosphere. Uh, this ozone layer uh, contains ozone. So when ozone is at ground level, it's bad. It's considered smog, but it, when it's up in the atmosphere, it protects us from UVA and UVB radiation. What happened was is that chlorofluorocarbons as well as bromide and a couple other um, hazardous chemicals were they actually trans they they move from the equator to the poles and they usually congregate there and what happens is is they actually break down the ozone layer so in the 1970s and 1980s they started to realize that there a hole started to open up in the ozone layer um, and this hole was getting larger and larger so everyone as a as an entire world came together and banned chlorofluorocarbons um, and in most developed countries. So there are still some underdeveloped countries that use chlorofluorocarbons but or CFCs, um, but most developed nations ban CFCs. And um, over time, we have seen that the that that protocol is called the Montreal Protocol that everybody signed. It's almost like the Paris Climate Change Agreement that we refuse to sign or we've backed out of now. Um, and what that does is over time now that has, the hole has shrunk and eventually they're hoping that the ozone layer repairs itself. The issue is that now underdeveloped countries that have larger populations are using more chlorofluorocarbons in aerosol cans and refrigerants, etc. And now they're worried that, you know, now that those underdeveloped countries are becoming more developed, they also have to sign on to the agreement. So that's the ozone layer. Climate change um, dealing with global warming is different. So climate change is the result of the change in climate. So the earth heating up or cooling down is climate change. That usually occurs because of global warming. So the result of global warming is climate change. And how this happens is this, um, is that the greenhouse gas emissions, such as carbon dioxide, nitrous oxide, sulfur oxide, etc., they form a blanket 
over the atmosphere. And what happens is when the sunlight comes in, usually it re-radiates out to the atmosphere, but this blanket traps the heat at the Earth's surface. And that is what we call the greenhouse effect. If you ever walk in a greenhouse, it's really hot because the heat gets trapped in there. So what happens is, is that the Earth gets warmer. It doesn't mean that our temperatures get warmer, but the Earth as a whole, meaning the ocean temperatures get warmer, land gets warmer, um, it holds that temperature longer. And then what happens is, is that this changes our weather patterns, which leads to climate change. One of the biggest things is is changing those ocean current patterns. So the ocean um, has a certain salinity to it, and that actually drives these um, underwater conveyor belts that are our ocean current systems. We have deep ocean current systems, and we have you know low depth ocean current systems. So deep in the ocean, we have ocean current systems. Think of Finding Nemo uh, when they jump, when the turtles jump onto that ocean current pattern. There are the deep ones, and then we have lower to the surface ones. Um, and these gyres move the water around the Earth, which helps our climate patterns. What happens is is that if we change the salinity of the ocean, it's going to change some of these ocean current patterns. When the glaciers are melting their fresh water, they're going to put that fresh water into the oceans, um, which then will change the salinity of the oceans, which then will change these ocean current patterns, which will change our climates. So stronger storms, um, stronger hur hurricanes, stronger typhoons, crazy weather patterns like just you know, downpours of rain and then the next day a little bit different. So it's just going to be a, a completely different weather patterns. Now we can adapt to this, which is we'll build different type of housing structures. We'll have better uh, clothes, all sorts of stuff like that. Um, or we can mitigate it, which means we can try and stop the CO2 emissions that are going in the atmosphere that then cause this climate change. At this point, a lot of people think that even if we changed our climate our CO2 behavior on fossil fuels, all that kind of stuff, that we wouldn't really change climate change. It's like already in process. That at this point, we really need to adapt. And then we should, of course, do change our CO2 emissions, but we're going to need to figure out how to adapt to this crazy type of climatic experiences that we're going to have in the future. So there are two important things that for the final exam. Um, the next thing is population. A lot of you did an okay job, but remember, even though we're moving towards the end of the semester, make sure you stay on task, meaning paragraphs in initial posts, citing sources, uh, proper length of initial and response posts. So last week we talked about the one China child policy, and there's tons of social consequences. Economic, meaning there's not enough people in the workforce now because women were not technically part of the workforce. The orphanages are overrun by girls now. And the country of China now has to pay for that because remember, culturally, it's more important to have a boy than it is to have a girl. So what happens is a lot of girls were either aborted, um, killed, or they were put into orphanages, they were abandoned because the parents just didn't want the girls because the boys carry on the family name. Um, and remember, boys were part of the social security system. So if you had a boy, most likely the boy's family, as they get older, take care of the parents. Um, and so that's why boys were more sought after than girls. So what's happening now is we're finding that there's, first of all, tons of undocumented women, meaning girls are coming forward from villages saying, hey, I exist, but I have no record that I exist, which is which is crazy in itself. The other thing is, is that you're having girls because they're low, the difference in sex ratio, meaning so many boys versus girls, there's not enough girls for boys to marry. So there's a lot of human trafficking going on um, in China. So there's just lots of social consequences involved with the population problem. Another issue that uh, the zero to negative population growth in the United States, a lot of that has to do with social issues, such as women now are being educated. So women in the work force means that less of them have children or they put off having children to a later date um, because they are either edu be they're in the education system or they are contributing to the workforce now. The cost of child care in the United States is exorbitant. Um, and then as well as the fact that um, access to birth control is, is, is 
not, I mean, I'm not saying that it's, it's easy, but it's, we have more access to birth control than most other countries. So freedom of women is a big deal um, on why our, our population is moving to zero negative population growth. Remember, we had the big um, baby boomer generation and they're passing away now. Um, and since then, we haven't had an explosion in population. Now, immigration, of course, will be a big player in this. Um, and of course, right now under President Trump, he is um, kind of tightening the noose on immigration. The issue, though, is if we don't have enough people paying into the system, our economy is not going to run well. So you'll see this in Europe. A lot of European countries open their gates to immigration because they need more population to feed in to the economic system. And that's why a lot of people know that we won't receive Social Security because the boomer generation will suck out all of the money from Social Security and there's not enough people of my generation or younger that are feeding into the Social Security system. So lots of problems with the zero to negative population growth. A lot of you answered the questions on, you know, the problem with reaching carrying capacity is we overshoot that carrying capacity, we've run out of resources, we'll have a, a population die back. So that's another issue with, um, with population exploding over the uh, carrying capacity line. And of course, push and pull factors. A lot of people move because they want to go somewhere for a job or because there's religious per persecution or there's all sorts of problems. They're pushed from where they live and they are then pulled into other countries like the United States for our freedom. Okay, so there, there are points that I want to point out about population. This week we're going to move into water, which of course is a big one of mine because I think one of the biggest natural resources that we need to keep an eye on is fresh water. Um, it's going to become very expensive in the future is that we are running out of access to fresh water. It doesn't mean we're running out of access to water. We're running out of access to fresh water. Um, and we can desalinate, but it's going to cost a lot of money to do that. So that's something that you want to keep an eye on. So this week we're working on water. Don't forget you have your population quiz due by tomorrow night, 1159. You have your water post due this week by Tuesday, response post by Thursday, water quiz due by next Sunday, 11.59. And don't forget to start preparing for that final exam. You can find the review for the final exam under the population session. Have a wonderful week. I look forward to your preparation for the final and these last three weeks of the semester.